Okay, we just finished some graphing, um, and we actually gave, we got the equation, we had to graph it ourselves. This time they give you the graph, and we have to come up with the equation. Sorry that these don't look too good. I scanned them, and they didn't come out real nice and crisp and clear, but hopefully you have your test in front of you, and you can see exactly what it looks like. So let's write the equation of a curve. Remember, you should just be able to look at the shape and tell what kind of uh, equation it is. Just looking at that shape, forgetting where it is right now, just looking at the shape. I know that that equation is a y equals x cubed. It's an x cubed graph. But what's the only difference with this one? Well, right here is where it normally would be at 0, 0. But what happened? It shifted to the right three places. Now, remember, if it goes left and right, that sign is going to change. It's going to be, if it shifts to the right, it's going to be negative. If it shifted to the left, it would be positive. This one shifts to the right, so it's going to be negative. And what do we change? We change the x. We change the function itself. So we're going to put that in parentheses and we're going to put an x and what did it do? It went three places to the right. That means it's going to be a minus three. We cubed the thing. Now, it also shifted up. It went to the right, but it also went up. It went up one place. When you shift it up and down, that just goes on the end of this. So it's a plus one. That's all there is to it. Okay, this next one. Um, this is a parabola, but it's an upside down parabola. Well, what did a parab what was the equation for a parabola? Well, it was y equals x squared. Now, since it goes turns the other way and it opens down, we put a negative in front of it. That's that's all you have to do when it goes down like this. But again, normally it would have been right here if it was negative and gone down like this. But what happened to that vertex? Well, we moved it over. We moved it over four places to the right, and we moved it see three places up alright so we changed this we moved it to the right we moved it up so what does that do to this thing right here well first of all it opens down so we gotta put a negative out in front then we put a parenthesis we moved it to the right that changes the X so you put X now it went to the right so we just talked about that it's gonna be minus how many places four now the function is a squared because it's a parabola and then what else did we do to it we moved it up that just goes on the end of this and that does it keeps the same sign so if it goes up it goes positive so it goes up three places just put a plus three right there and that's all there is to that one let's box this one in so we can remember that all right let's look at this one right here this is a square root we had to graph a square root actually we graphed all of these earlier in these earlier problems but again look what it does it goes down so this is our basic parent function it looks like this okay but again normally uh, this graph right here would have done something like that. But what did we do? We moved it, so we flipped it, so you're going to put a negative on the outside. All right, so we're going to do that right away. Put a negative on the outside, and then what did we do? We took this point and we moved it, and this time we moved it to the left. Moved it one, two, three places. Again, it's hard to read this, but if you have your test in front of you, you can see exactly where it is. So we moved it to the left three places. Now, if we move it to the left, that changes the sign and we did it to the x so we're keeping everything inside the square root we didn't move it up and down we just moved it to the left so it's going to be plus moved it to the left um, what I say one two three places so it's going to be x plus three and that's it the minus means we flipped it going the other way the plus three we means we moved it to the left three places it did not move up and down okay so if this was up here we would have put a plus whatever if it moved down here we would have put a minus whatever it didn't do that so we don't have to worry about moving it up and down just keep it just like that now we go to something completely different where you're not gonna um, we're not gonna do the graphing anymore this looks complicated it looks like some crazy symbolization right in here but it's actually fairly simple if you look at this there's your f function there's your g function what does this say it just says find f minus g so we take our f function which is 2x minus 9 and we subtract the g function from it now this is where you have to be a little bit careful we subtract but you're subtracting that entire function so make sure that you put that in parentheses it's a common mistake people make and we have to distribute the negative. Okay, that's really the hardest thing about this problem. So watch, it's 2x minus 9 minus 6x. Most people get that. This is the part that a lot of people mess up on. It's minus a negative 7, which is just plus 7. Now we just add like terms. 2x minus 6x is negative 4x. Negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. And that's all there is to it. Just subtracting 2 polynomials. This one we're just adding. We're adding the f function and the g function. And it's hard to see that, but it's a minus 2. So let's just add them together. This is actually easier than the first one. So it's 3x plus 12 plus the g function, which is 5x minus 2. Add them together. Add the like terms. That's 8x plus 10. 
and you're done. It's the same kind of thing. We did addition and subtraction. Now we're going to do multiplication and we're going to do division. So let's do it. We're going to multiply these two functions together, the f function and the g function. Now remember, they are sums, so when you multiply them together, you must put them in parentheses. It's very important. 2x minus 5. If you look at this, remember we call it the FOIL method, so it's first outside, inside, last, so let's do that. 8x times 2x is 16x squared, don't forget that, a lot of people forget, it's x times x, which is x squared. Then it's 8x, so that's the first, the outside is 8x and minus 5, which is minus 40x, the inside is negative 4x, and the last is negative 2 times negative 5, which is plus 10. Add like terms, 16x squared minus 44x plus 10. That's all you can do with this. I've had some people on the test try to solve for x. This is not a solving for x problem. This is only multiplying things together and that's what your answer is going to look like right there. Let's do the next one. The next one I let you actually do this fairly easily um, because I didn't make you do the actual division. All right, all you got to do is set it up. This is probably the easiest out of all of them. You don't have to do any math at all. It just means the f function divided by the g function. So you take your f function which is negative 2x minus 3, and you divide it by the g function. And so you just put that in there. It's negative 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. I'm not expecting you to simplify that. That's good enough right there. You just keep it like that, and that's your f divided by g. That's all there is to that one.